to who's training, who's leading their classes. But so far, what do you have to add? Um, it doesn't have to be that they're practicing right now, um, but they have to be so engaged in the industry that they have talked to top producers or successful agents that can give another perspective. You know, Howard Brent was one of the, my idols, and he was the one that was the ultimate connector of, of real estate. And, and I see it sort of like, I can see where somebody comes in after Howard Brent and how do we do it, I'm just like, tired of hearing about Howard Brent. But in reality, what did the guy think who came in after the light bulb with Thomas Edison? He had to follow that act, but didn't make Thomas Edison not a good person. He just gave a good model that we can probably take things from it and connect people that will give us a good educational opportunity. Different perspective, good, yeah. Brandy, can I just say one thing, what Please. she just said was huge, connector. An instructor that's gonna connect you with someone in Maryland to Washington State to because they know those people because they're talking to them. That for me, I look for that in the instructor by going on Facebook and YouTube and like, okay, I'm gonna go to their class, they have passion, they're engaged, and they know other people across the country that could help me with my business. So you know you're gonna be in the company of people you wanna spend time with as well. Interesting. Brooke, what say you? Um, I mean, we all had this conversation right before we came in here, and <laughs> I should have been outside. We, we, we all kind of have the same opinion. We want to learn from somebody that has experience, that love teaching, and are completely compassionate and connect with me. But that's what it's all about. I learned so much from people that love their jobs, love teaching, and they I get something out of it. So, so I'm hearing from the end. In the trenches doesn't necessarily matter as long as they have that experience and they're involved enough to know the trends, what's important. On this end, I'm hearing, is that correct? In the trenches, doing what you're teaching is important. Okay, very good. Let me just, Let me just add to that. Sometimes, I don't know if I'm a good instructor because I don't have the patience to do the delivery. I'd rather have somebody with good delivery sending my content and talking about it than for me to be the teacher. Got it. Okay. Let's start. Let's go back down to Brandy. What was that? What was she's a great teacher. I'll take her class. Okay. <laughs> Brandy, let's start down here and let's talk about. Do you ever find yourself looking for something that isn't out there? Is there anything that's not currently offered that you wish was? Does anybody have anything off the top of their head? I mean, I want y'all all to answer. Yes and no. There's versions of stuff out there, and I don't like it. Give me an example. Um, let's be honest, let's, we're amongst friends. Okay, like team building. Okay. Like everyone, that's like one of the topics that's hot. And you have, depending on your brokerage, if your brokerage supports it or if they don't. But I, I, very few people, I think, are actually deserve to teach that. In a capacity that should be taught. I mean, you can, I've taught a class on it. I don't necessarily, it was a, this is what other people have done. It wasn't me. I want someone who's done it and that will tell me the dirty, dark secrets that no one wants to say because they're not willing to share their dirty laundry. So and, what's not out there? Um, I'm feeling you. Oh, okay, like how hard it is or how do you actually work attain talent, or how do you actually keep it, or um, what are the, I mean, there's some classes, like um, KW has um, RSTLM, but again, it's not as widespread, and so you get a lot of, in my opinion, fake profits, um, like this is how it's done, this is not how it's done, um, and it's not actual substance, I mean, that particular topic, just that one topic, um, from what I can talk about, and so then, substance team building you don't feel is really out there. Yeah, I mean, more of somebody will give you the steps, it's great, but I want to know, okay, I, yes, this is one, but let's go 1A, 1B, and let's tell me what happened when you did this, and how your team reacted, how you do a team retreat, how do you create your team goals, is it just, I'm the team leader, so I'm doing 25 million, you're doing five, or you're off my team. What like, hiccups that, did you run into? Yeah, how did you that, I mean, how did you react to that, how did you go forward with that? Um, that topic is, and then depending on who you talk to, I mean, the consumer, the, 
in my opinion, my consumer um, understands the team concept far better than the real estate industry because they get it. They understand that because they go to a doctor and a, for doctor advice, and then the doctor tells them to go to the nurse practitioner. The nurse practitioner deals with the nurse. The nurse sends them to the receptionist. I mean, heck, it's a team right there. And they get that. You go get your blood drawn with somebody else. Yeah, and so they're familiar with it. But we in our industry is like, no, you have to be super agent. We can't discuss this. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's why I've been there. Okay, stop saying <laughs> Yes. I'd like to pick a, piggyback on that because I think Randy has an excellent point, and I think team building is something everybody's afraid of. Um, Keller Williams says it one way, Remax says it one way, Independence do it another way, other people don't do it at all. So it's hard to do a class on team building because there's so many different models that are approved. But the thing that does work that I don't see in the industry, is, particularly since Howard's been gone, is to, to go to a class where, for Brandy, if, if she had five different agents who are, who are team leaders, or even team members, to sit there and talk about their model, how their model works, and from those five people, she might find one that works for her. And I think that's something we're missing in the industry. That, to me, is very important because maybe a, a Keller Williams person doesn't work for me, but maybe a uh, Google Banker version works sure. for me. Or maybe this other person has a great idea that would work for everybody. But I think um, for, t since for team building, um, the real estate commissions are afraid of us because they don't know what it is. The consumers totally get it. They're thrilled with it because uh, they can always talk to somebody who knows what's going on with their with their, um, with their, their as long as and they're educated. Like, I feel like they're educated the, on that. Well, Laura has put, doing a good job at that because that's yes. something that we hear from consumers all the time. It's like, I got passed off, or well, you know, she's a five, but her partner's a three, or I don't know. And I think, again, that goes, with back the right to, expectations. that goes back to education, though, so maybe we have better education for our team members, too. Or, and for us, you know, when you're a team leader, all of a sudden you're in management. I mean, I don't want to be in management, I want to be, a, I sell houses, I list houses. Well. I, I would create such business that I need other people so I can continue providing that level of service. And I don't want to be a level playing field with everybody out there. I want to rise above the crowd. So to do that, you have to have a team. Forgive me for forgive me for stepping in, but I think I think we got that point. I've only got nine minutes left, and I want to give the committee an opportunity to pose any questions that we didn't get to. But I would like to hear um, short, sweet answers to anything out there that you feel broke is not currently available that you find yourself looking for. Um, well, I mean the team building thing is huge. So team building, anything on top of team building. No, team building, coaching, teaching sales, like basic sales skills definitely is missing. Okay. Um, I think more more um, generational skills of selling, some selling skills, understanding how the different technologies and communication. Um, I'm a huge proponent of knowing your scripts, what to say, how to say it, but you got to know who the person is that you're saying it to and how will they receive it. So you just said generational, but then you said technologies and scripts. Well, yes. Tell me a little bit more. Like millennials, they'll they'll want to do and communicate more with texting. I had to go and study and learn all this because I didn't have couldn't find it in NAR. Um, but I had to learn how to communicate because I bought brought in buyers agents that all they wanted to do was text the client. And I'm going, oh my God, you can talk to them. Well, guess what? That's how the client wanted to be communicated with, and they sell houses. So I had to change my mindset to understand that maybe the. Um, the, the old home and me, um, the people, they like to have the more letter, formal letters of communications, and they love that. But they, the other generations might just really have an uh, email. Mm -hmm. um, lots of conversations I've been involved in that over the past three years, and I can tell you one size doesn't fit all there either. And as long as you're having the conversation and setting the expectations, you're always going to win. If you ask, you know, it's about asking the right questions. Before I get back to you, Brandy, and I will, I want to get to so say technology. We don't have enough technology training out there. Practical applications of technology. We talk about doing video, how to do it specifically. How are you going to post it to Facebook? How's it going to work? How are you going to boost your post? Step by step instructions. We don't have that. Okay. I would say just kind of continuing, continue, continuing with the trend that I'm a new agent coming into the business, there wasn't a whole lot of ground level stuff in terms of training. It was uh, a lot of niche, you know, trainings and a lot of, um, you know, very specific uh, topics, whereas I was looking for something just kind of broad, just tell me what to do, because when you first start, step by step, it's we're so back to overwhelming when you first
first start okay. because there's so many things you feel like you don't know how to do. You don't know how you're going to learn all of them. It would be great if there was almost like a, a separate set of courses for new agents mm -hmm. that says, you know, when you're first starting the business, these are going to, we're not going to lap you here during the class. We're going to keep make sure that you understand each of these things. And, uh, I'm hearing a practical trend uh, taking place. Yeah. What would you like to add to that? Um, that's, that's what I was going to say. My husband just got his license in August, and, and he had the benefit. We are with Kellen Williams, and they have Ignite, which is a new agent um, training program. But what he didn't get was, now I'm a realtor. What do I need to do as a realtor? And what are some practical things that, um, that make me a realtor? I mean, he did orientation. They do a great job. They get the ethics training and all of that. But I think it goes to here's your contracts and front so for, but how do you get that person to get the contract? It's the first step. Yeah, it's the, the second step. So it's seven. I think yeah. that I agree. It's for the new agents. We need something that gets them kicked off and into the business. Brad, you had something to add? I was just gonna say leadership. Um, there's not real leadership classes, and by leadership, yes, you can have leadership in team building, but leadership in NAR. I mean, how do we create leaders uh, within our industry to continue our industry on? I mean, the reason I got involved with NAR was because actually of a speaker that got me involved because he reached out. I didn't know how to get involved. There's not like, hey, if you're interested, this is what you need to do to go to your local association. This is how you run. This is how it works. This is how the so communities again, are. And so, <laughs> forgive me, I'm trying to be respectful to the minutes, but I'm hearing practical for leadership, practical for team, practical for first-time agents, technology, practical, practical, practical. Does anybody on the committee have any questions that they would like to ask? I've got a question. We're gonna, I'm going to keep it moving, so get to a mic. Thank you very much. Great committee, a great panel. Uh, 28 years in the business. I am dedicated to the last 10 of my years in the future to education. I am very passionate the way I teach. Uh, but one of the questions I, I also am on a commit. I am on the real estate commission. So Let's we stick are the, to just the question. We have the commission that chooses what classes to be taught. So the question I have for this committee is, if you could ask the regulatory body, meaning the people who choose your CE, uh, what changes in education would you like to see? Because we're the ones who make that decision for you. Tell the regulatory body, hey, what would you like to see change in CE? I, I'm i going to assume that the one thing is practical step-by-step, -step, um, things that are give you hours, it's always practical, supposed, anything yeah. to add to that. It's always supposed to be towards the consumer. Well, you need to understand, the agent helps the consumer. So if you're helping us, you're helping them. It's not just about the consumer. If we are not a good agent, we are going to stink with the consumer. Next question? Any other questions? Yes? In the beginning when you introduced them, you said that some of them did from this transactions to this transaction generally. So I'm curious to know, those of you that have designations on the panel, how many listings do you guys do a year? And did the designations help increase your listings? Is that your, something you're your... comfortable sharing? If it is, please do. I don't have a problem. I have one that probably has the most designations, and I do around 200, anywhere from 175 to 225, just depends on the year. Now, does that go up after you started taking your designations? I did my designation when I was doing, you know, 12. I wanted to do more, so I got the education, so you that I could do education. more, and I continued. I don't stop. In fact, right now, I'm looking for more classes to take. Anybody else feel like it's been a direct effect? You mentioned CIS. I have two. Uh, when I got my CRS, I was doing a one and a half million, which is about 15 deals in Baton Rouge, and I got my CRS and immediately okay. doubled my business the next year. So it's a very, very practical application. When I did my CIAS, I, I step by step how to do it. Uh, we did 10, uh, uh, 10 uh, investor deals Investors. next year, strictly from that cl what I learned in the class immediately. That that was one of the important things with me on the CIAS. I now, because of that class, have an investor who wants to purchase a house a day. We're we've already bought fifty seven. But we're getting practices. Like <laughs> yeah, we're doing practices, and we have to do systems. We have to make sure it works well. Yeah. Um, we are nearing the end. Amy, thank you for facilitating this. Vicki, thank you so much. Heidi, it's been an absolute pleasure. I do want to um, extend um, 
an invitation for anybody in this room who would like to take advantage of, here at Direct has created a 12-month online training course that I want to offer these gatekeepers, anybody in this room, a free membership for one year. What we've done is we've created four phases of the real estate transaction. It's attract, consult, serve, and nurture. Within each of those phases, there's 12 modules. We get very practical. If, for example, we're talking about under the attract phase, direct mail, for example, we have people on that have specifically generated lots of business using direct mail. They talk about who they mail, what they mail, how often they mail, what it looks like. And then we also talk to people that have helped create those pieces for them. That's one example. It's a year's worth of practical, consumer-based information and training. If anybody would like to take advantage of that, feel free to take Ryan over here in the purple shirt, your business card, and I would be happy to offer this room a year of that for free. That, I was going to say, what's the cost, Brandy? Um, it, there's a, a lot of different options. Okay. If it's an agent independently, if it's an office, you know, call me. We can we can go through what the best. And if we don't see your people here, we go to hereatdirect.com. You can go to hereatdirect.com. We're on Facebook. You can tweet and hashtag hereatdirect. We're all over. So thank you so much for giving us this time, and I hope you all found some benefit in this. Thanks, Lord. Thank you.